Hi everyone, I'm Dave Pluff. I work for the College of the Arts and I teach Art 101, which is Introduction to Art, and some of you may know it as Art Appreciation. My classes are for non-majors, they're for freshmen, and they are stadium-sized classes, literally over 100 students per class, and I teach several of those every day. The project I'm going to discuss for our video today on content engagement uh, is the museum visit. And a museum visit is one of those core components of an Art 101 class. And I was kind of tasked with the job of transitioning that into a virtual world. With the museums closed, how can we literally visit a museum? So I'm going to take you over to the Canvas site and I'm going to walk you through my project. So here we are on Canvas. This is my assignment instruction page. And before I go into this, I should tell you what the museum assignment used to look like. Students had a choice of visiting one of several local museums, such as the LA County Museum of Art, the Getty, or Norton Simon. They would go and visit and spend an hour or two there, and then they would come back and then give a one-page uh, or two-page report uh, it might be comparing and contrasting a couple works of art, or it might just be a reflection paper on their experience. My virtual project here is taking that compare and contrast idea and applying that to the museums themselves. Fortunately, with the time that the museums were closed, they really upped their game in terms of their websites, uh, the quality of the sites, some of them added actual true virtual tours of their galleries, a lot more artwork was scanned and put online, a lot more information was added, so it was really quite wonderful uh, what the museums were doing. For the feedback on this project, I also asked that the students provide a Flipgrid response rather than a paper. But what they were to do is they were first to choose a couple museums. One of the things I didn't recognize was an opportunity at first was now that the students could do this virtually, they were not stuck to museums in Southern California. Uh, they could, if they wanted to, research LACMA or the Norton Simon or the Getty, but now they could go to all these other wonderful institutions throughout the United States, such as the Art Institute of Chicago, or MoMA over in New York, but they could also go to the Louvre or the Musée d'Orsay, and they didn't even have to stick with a Western museum. They could go to like the National Museum of Korea, anywhere that they wanted to go that held art was fine with me. So for the Flipgrid, the students would then record their responses, their reflections on the time that they spent on the museum sites minimum 30 minutes each site, and they were to introduce themselves, they were to tell me about their user experience, they were to tell me about the type of art that they were interested in, because this also helps me kind of formulate my class. If more students were into, say, modern art, I would put more modern art in our lectures. And then they were supposed to highlight one artwork that they really were excited about from their tour that they found at the museum. And then they would leave a Flipgrid. So I'm gonna flip over to the Flipgrid site. And this is what one of their responses would be like. They had to provide at least a three minute response, but I also capped them at five minutes. And keep in mind during a semester, I have 330 students. So you start to multiply that number out by the number of minutes here, and you can see that this does take a while to grade, uh, even though you're just watching these videos and, and providing feedback to them. This student talked about three and a half minutes, perfect length. What was great about Alex's project is that it inspired him, once we were through COVID, to make those future trips to museums, because a lot of these students had not been to a museum before, or if they had, it was in third grade and it was in a very regulated environment. I try not to do too many prompts for this type of project simply because I don't want to have 300 
of the same exact videos. You know from grading hundreds and hundreds of papers, uh, it can get very monotonous. So I usually like to give the prompt that they're sitting across from me, we're having coffee together, and they're telling me about these really cool museums that they just visited. I do provide the students with a worksheet. I'll bring that up here in just a second. So this is a worksheet that they had access to to help them with some of the prompts and to develop that three minute video that they're gonna leave on Flipgrid. And of course, during the video, they're always more than welcome to refer to their notes. But you can see that this student, for their first museum, went to the LA County Museum of Art and another local museum, the Norton Simon Museum, as their second choice. We have the website address, their locations, what their landing page was like, the menu bar, and all the different options available to them, the best and worst parts of the site, and also they were to choose a particular artwork that they really enjoyed. Uh, so we have Paris by Raoul Dufy and The Happy Lovers by Fragonard. So student wrote about these. Now what's great about Flipgrid is that the students were able to take the images uh, of these artworks and post them on their Flipgrid video while they're talking about them. And I thought that was just uh, really great. And so we're gonna head back to the Flipgrid site now. And you can see from the feedback here that out of 110 students in this class, 107 of them responded. A lot of the students, they absolutely love uh, to do the flip grid because they can do this at home, they can do this in their car, on the computer, or on their phone. It just makes it real easy for them. So uh, this was one of the really great assignments that came from the pandemic. I also wanted to share with you some of the feedback that I got from these student flip grids. And many of them were surprised at actually how much art these museums held. Now, I worked at a museum. I can tell you that only two or 3% of a museum's holdings are actually on the floor of a museum. The other 97, 98% is in storage rooms. And it's really, it's kind of disheartening when you think about all the art that's hidden away. But in a virtual world, all of that is accessible. And I think it was uh, the LA County Museum of Art had over 110,000 listings that you could access online. So that was really a very cool advantage uh, of this museum project. Uh, other students were able to really search into specific cultures that they were interested in, whether it was their own or others. Um, I had students who had experience, for instance, like being uh, a ballet dancer when they were younger, and they were searching out the works of Edgar Degas, who in the mid to late 1800s was one of the Impressionist artists, and he was famous for these ballerina images. So there were a lot of really cool interactions as well. Many of the students had never been to a museum before, as I've mentioned, and many of them were planning trips as soon as the museums were reopening. But I have to admit, one of the most interesting things and one of the coolest things were from my computer majors. And they were the ones who were the harshest critics of the museum sites, telling me about their outdated material, telling me what they could really do to upgrade their museum sites. And with that, I hope you enjoyed the walkthrough of my museum project.